This is round four of Real Wars, the extreme fishing and survival challenge. 15 days of gruelling competition in the wilds of Western Ireland, where Rob York and Steve Broad go head to head to find the ultimate fisherman. Rob York, an energetic all-rounder who's thoroughly enjoying life in the wilderness with just a rod and a reel for company. <laughs> Man, did you see that? Steve Broad, an experienced course angler, he's relishing the fishing and the chance to get back to basics. <laughs> they are 10 days into the 15 day competition and as they head towards Loch Seamus McConroy for round four, Rob is a clear lead with 40 points to Steve's 29. But at this new lake location, conditions heavily favour course fisherman Steve and he's confident of scoring well. Before they begin the challenge, Rob and Steve must choose four items from a kit list of six. They could gamble and select extra fishing supplies, or go for safety and opt for more survival gear. I've chosen the basic fishing kit because that's essential. The sleeping bag is also very important. I've forgotten the tent because I think I've got plenty of cover, and I've forgotten the cooker as well. The extra bait's important to try and catch these coarse fish and the extra tackle means that I can use a bit of finesse about things while I'm fishing. I'm going to take the basic fishing kit. I'm going to take a sleeping bag because I want to stay warm at night, but I'm not going to take a tent because there's enough wood to make a shelter out of. I'm also going to take a stove because I don't want to waste time making a fire, and I'm also going to take the bait because I don't know what these fish are going to eat but I'm not going to take the extra tackle. Rob and Steve receive instructions through a high-tech mobile phone capable of sending text messages, emails and attachments. It's time for real wars to begin. Rob is told to head southwest towards location one on the lock where he'll make camp. Steve is instructed to head south to location two Equipment packed, instructions received, it's time to head off. I should be fishing now, but I've had to go through the undergrowth and it's taken me about an hour or something just to get to here and I've got to get a move on to get fishing. Rob decides to make camp later and head straight to the water's edge. <sighs> this looks like a drinking hole for wildebeest or something. Hey, result! Extra tackle for free! What it is, it's um, a pike plug in pretty good condition. It's still got the wire trace on it. Looks like there's some big pike in here. Casting out with his scavenged plug, within minutes Rob sees a massive rise. Man, did you see that? Did you see that great big pike? <gasps> Woo! <laughs> A lot of food on that, but... Oh, man. <sighs> Goosebumps up the back of my neck. <sighs> okay, there's something out there. We know there is something out there. I think I've got something. <laughs> I think I'm... That's why I've got the weed. No, it seems to be going... Oh my God almighty. What the hell do I do with... Sugar. Woo, look at him. Oh. Adrenaline got the better of Rob. He over-tightened the clutch on his reel, causing the line to snap as the pike oh, fought man. back. The monster returned to the deep. Adrenaline. It's, it's, it's everywhere. It's coming out of my eyeballs, my ears. It's hard to compose myself. But that's not, this is not fishing. This is, this is monster hunting. Yes! <laughs> Steve chose extra bait and was given bread, worms and sweet corn. Mixed together with water, they make an irresistible meal for coarse fish. And this? 
gourmet delicacy is what's going to win me the competition. The bait is placed in a swim feeder, which sits on the bottom of the lock, attracting fish to the scent, where Steve is waiting to hook them. This is my territory. This, um, this is where I feel really comfortable, so this is uh, really good for me. Confidence is high and I actually know what I'm doing. <laughs> which uh, is very unusual because the, the fly fishing and sea fishing were not alien to me, I'm not unexperienced, but it's hard work for me. This is what I do all the time for my hobby and my fun, so uh, this is good, good for me. Unlike Rob who's going for the big pike, Steve has decided to boost his score by catching as many perch, roach and bream as possible. It's a highly successful tactic and Steve is soon reeling in fish after fish. Here we go, that's fish number one. Oh, fish, fish. Woo. That's another fish. Oh, there's another. Well, it might be small, but they all count. Rob too has caught a couple of small roach, but he's just seen something much more interesting go after his pike plug. Yeah. I saw him saw this nose up here, the perch, and the perch went whoop, very, very aggressive feeder, going for something about a quarter of its size. Wait! Yes, something to eat, a little perch. Oh man. One perch. Four ounces. It's the last catch of the day because Rob receives a message telling him to stop fishing and texting his daily total. Two small roach and a four ounce perch gives Rob three points. Steve has had a much better day with two bream, four roach and a perch landing nine points. That's never happened before. I've, uh, because I've had a successful day fishing, I've uh, been given a reward. We set both anglers a daily target of eight points, which Steve exceeded, so he's won himself a prize. A can of baked beans for his supper. But before he can eat it, there's a fire to be made. That's my fire nearly ready for cooking on. Just a nice bed of uh, white hot embers. So all I have to do is just keep little twigs going on, gets that red hot base all built up for me, pop the pan on and that's great, everything's ready to go. It's the anticipation that's killing me, I just can't wait. I just need these beans so badly, I haven't eaten all day, I'm absolutely starving. I suppose there's one good thing, Eating all these beans, at least I'm on my own out here. Excuse me, sorry. <sighs> Talk about losing fish. After the big pike coming off, walking back across the field, thinking all about this pike and how I'm going to get it tomorrow. I've dropped my perch. My perch is no more. My perch has come off its perch and it's lying in the field and I can't find it. So I've just lost my meagre meal of the evening. But I was thinking about bigger things. Um, so what I'm going to do is go and get some wood to make my shelter because I haven't got a tent. There's plenty of logs around so I'm going to make a lean-to right here up against the wall. Something to eat, hazelnuts, just what I was after. So, make a roof and have dinner. It's a wonderful warm evening in a beautiful location, but tonight Rob just can't seem to relax. He's chewing me up, that pike is. I haven't stopped thinking about it ever since he, ever since I lost him. I want him, I've never caught a pike in my life. This is the one I want. 
I reckon if Steve knows about it, he'll want it as well. So that's another dimension to the competition now. Anyway, I've been sharpening my hooks in anticipation of Mr. Pikey tomorrow. But in the meantime, I'm going to have to try and get him to sleep. This is real wars on the banks of Loch Seamus McConroy, where Rob York has been fighting the pike and Steve Broad has had his pick of the coarse fish. Day 11, and after a night of pikey dreams, Rob is up early on the trail of the big fish, returning to the spot where he battled the pike yesterday. It's not long before something takes his plug once again. Oh, 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 man. He's, I've got a pike. I've got a big pike on the end here. He's moving. He's moving out, but he's gone just straight down to the weed. Rob is careful not to make the same mistake he made yesterday. The big pike has gone down into the weed, so he tries to play the fish, tiring it out. Wow. It's the wind whistling between the line of the rod. It is not. It's either. Requiem for York or for the pike. Rob attached to a large pike for two hours. It's a battle of wills. And once again, the pike wins. I was asking for trouble. <laughs> Big tail splash. Down. He knew where to go, he went straight into the weed. Third time lucky. Roach. Meanwhile, Steve is quietly racking up the roach, boosting his score. Fish. All these roach are, are absolute corkers. Perfect, perfect condition. Got something here. Something in. Yep. It's a little baby pike. Look at that. Look at that. Grabbed it. <sighs> well, I think that's something quite tasty. Small jack pike. Little jack pike. Coming in on the lure. I'm going to have to. Deal with it, I think. Quite hungry. Absolutely razor sharp, these teeth. This is just designed for death, this creature. One jack pike, one pound and four ounces. Rob receives a message telling him to break camp and head south to location two. It's important that the competition is fair, so Rob and Steve swap places to ensure they both get to fish the same stretches of water. Well, somebody else has been here anyway. I don't have to do any hard work. At least I can get straight out fishing now. Places like this, locks like this, have you know a lot of pike in them, up to five, six pounds. So I'm in with a really good chance of catching a fish. Um, it's just a matter of persevering with it. I'm going to persevere with this spinner because I need a pike and I need one now because I'm absolutely ravenous. Steve is confident of catching, but as Rob found to his cost, these pikes are extremely wily. He waits all afternoon without a single bite. Meanwhile, Rob is unhappy at his new location too. One pond surrounded with reeds. Very well known internationally for coarse fishing, but just for me as as Rob York, it's it's not my thing. I prefer a bit of action, a bit of moving around. Um, 
I've seen the same view, let's say, for the last two days. And I think Steve, I think Steve, yeah, he'll like it. It'd be good for his kind of venue, it's his kind of fishing. Um, he's a very patient person. I don't think I'm quite so patient. So I won't say horses for courses. I'll say, <laughs> I don't know, pike for, pike for ponds. Rob may feel a little frustrated by the fishing conditions, but back on the shore, another predator is much closer to landing a pike. Got to keep my fish on me at all times now. This mink, he was, was just smelling my fish and wanted, wanted my, uh, wanted my pike, basically. And I can't let my pike go because that's all I've got to eat. I've got about, I don't know, not much time left for the rest of the day to catch another fish. So I could do with another pike, but I've got to watch my back at all times because he'll be, he'll be onto me. As the day ends, Rob is told to text in his daily fish total. With a high-scoring pike and three roach, he's reached the eight-point target for today. Steve has also done well, with his haul of ten roach and one bream, bringing him 12 points. They've both won prizes. Steve gets to enjoy a welcome four-pack of beer. Rob is given a bottle of wine to accompany his fried pike. Mmm. Très bien. Fantastic. Ah, vin rouge. The red stuff. Whoa. Delish. A little pepper. A little flavour. Don't know what it's going to taste like. I hear it's quite bony, but I'm sure I should be able to hopefully work out where the bones are. And it's got a great taste. Well, that's what they say. <laughs> it's a kind of a cross. It's a cross between a trout and a pollock. Firm flesh. Good flavour. Good flavour. Keep the skin on. I like it with the skin on. I think that's better. Day 12, and as he makes himself a cup of nettle tea, Steve assesses his situation. Well, it's been a hard slog so far, but uh, still feel pretty good. I'm not suffering too badly. I've been wet, I've been cold, but it hasn't got me down yet, it hasn't finished me off, so I'm feeling good about things, positive. There's some more to go yet, but I'm sure deal with it. What I've got is a small dead roach on a wire trace set a couple of feet deep under a large float and what I'm going to do is cast it out to just beyond the lilies and hopefully uh, attract the attention of a passing pike that will think it's dinner and uh, that'll be that. Yes! I've just been bitten off by a pike on the way in so I'd be fish and everything. Oh dear. Steve decides to try the dead bait one more time and prepares the pike another meal of roach. Oh, yes. Finally, his persistence pays off. Oh, well, that's good news. A pike at last. You just stay out of there. There he is. <laughs> oh. There we go. Perfect camouflage, perfect markings, designed to hunt. He's got a lateral line down his side, this here, all the way down. 
That's a sense organ that he sends his vibration with. So he can even hunt in the dark. Just a perfect killing machine. This is the perfect fisherman. Whereas I just play at it. Oh, he's obviously been eating well. Six and a half pounds. I've seen a whole lot of little roach and what I've done is put a hook on the end of a piece of uh, six pound line, got a small bit of worm on it and I've made a float out of a piece of reed and attached a dandelion to the reed so I can see the float when it moves. I'm attaching all of this to a piece of hazel, just a hazel stick. This is the ultimate quiver tip, hazel quiver tip, as found in all good fishing and angling stores. See them going to the worm, yeah I can see them flickering past it. I want the big one to move the dandelion. Something's moving. My float is moving. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, you little monkey. Whoa! Look! Look at him! Come on! Yes! Monsieur Le Perch, look at the colours. Mmm, delish. By the time Rob is told to text in his daily fishing total and return to the drop-off point, his homemade rod has hooked eight roach, five perch and 13 points. Steve has two roach, three perch and a pike, landing him 10 points. As the rivals meet up again, there is no doubt who's won this round. Steve has scored a decisive victory with 31 points to Rob's 24. In the overall competition, Rob now leads Steve by a mere four points. Everything rests on the next round. Loch Cara is the final venue of the competition. The pressure is unbearable as Rob and Steve battle to catch the fish that will land them victory. Join us in the final round to see who will be the ultimate winner of Real Wars.